So now let us see the IoT applications, some of the applications. So the, the uh, smart grid, so th this is the first example I am taking, which is uh, a smart grid. So what is the advantage? So this is one example where uh, you can use such uh, network of smart objects to conserve the resources or uh, to optimize uh, consumption of the resources. And the smart grid is a classic example of uh, Am I audible, Keshu? Yes, you are audible. I'm audible, right? Because I saw your message. That's right. Okay. No, no. Please, please continue. Thank you. So, okay. Yeah. So the, the, the smart grid is a classic example of uh, you know, Internet of Things. And uh, so if you look, look at it, it is a huge network encompassing power plants, transmission network, distribution network, substations, and all the way down to the end consumer premises. So it is a huge network. Okay. And when implemented, uh, it is expected to save energy, a lot of energy, and uh, use more clean energy resources. So, they say you can use clean resources, uh, you know, in ad hoc manner only if you have that kind of smart uh, network. Okay, and it can, for example, send requests to reduce uh, the load. That is one of the uh, example. So it can send uh, the instructions down to the consumers to reduce the load. Say, for example, during the peak hours, and then also offer incentives to do so. So it can continuously transmit, uh, for example, uh, variable billing rates and encourage uh, load shifting to non-peak hours, okay. So which is called the demand response kind of uh, schemes. They are already being implemented in uh, countries like uh, US. Now it is possible only if you, uh, the utilities can go all the way down to consumers and typically the way it happens is they send the these instructions either home energy gateway or they send the instructions to the smart meter. And the smart meter or home energy gateway is connected to the appliances at home. Like for example, your air conditioner, washing machine, your refrigerator, you know, your motor, lighting, etc. So if you have programmed your smart meter or home energy gateway to accept such instructions from the utilities, then uh, that gateway or smart meter can instruct your appliances to either switch off or reduce the consumption of the load. Uh, so advantage, so what is the advantage of that? So in the particular, uh, say a big metro, if you implement these kind of schemes, uh, then it can uh, reduce the load. But today what happens, uh, at least in Western countries, when there is a load, peak load, uh, they have to fire uh, temporary power plants uh, based on, uh, say, a gas which are more expensive, or if there is a demand, consistent demand, then they have to add more power plants. Okay, so all that can be avoided, uh, and you can basically shift the load uh, to non-peak hours uh, by this kind of scheme, and you can incentivize the users for that. Uh, now, the smart grid is a network of networks. So, in home or in a building, commercial building. Uh, you will have local home area networks, okay. Uh, say for example, Zigbee Home Automation or Zigbee Smart Energy Profile kind of network, okay, uh, which is connected in turn to the larger network. Now, either through smart meter or a dedicated home energy gateway. So the smart meter also uh, can work as a gateway or dedicated home energy gateway you can use. So the way, so it becomes like a hybrid. Uh, because the devices which are the appliances which are at home, okay, you cannot access them over internet. You have to go through the gateway. Okay. Now uh, there are substations, okay, which get connected in that locality. The substations serve the locality. Now each substation may also have a local real-time network of their own, and they may use more reliable kind of uh, uh, network, which is more reliable than what you find on the internet. And again, uh, that network will get connected through gateway uh, to the larger internet. 
Uh, the smart grid is a two-way energy and information transfer network. And this is possible only if we have real-time sensing and smart devices which can take real-time decisions. The smart grid is full of uh, uh, very smart devices, smart sensing, because everywhere across the, across the board, for example, power plants with transmission, okay, all the way to substation and at home, everywhere you will have to take a real-time decisions. All the devices need to be smart and they need to talk to each other uh, and they need to sense impending problems and take corrective actions. And there has to be a lot of predictive capability in the, in the smart grid. Only then uh, you can have a smart grid which is a, a self-healing and reliable kind of grid. Okay. Uh, one example of this, for example, uh, uh, sensing system, for example, uh, can detect the transformer issues and can take action. So, so systems are available. Uh, and uh, so a lot of sensors are attached to this uh, transformer. And things like uh, in oil temperature and uh, the, uh, water content in oil, etc., are measured continuously. And uh, the predictive analytics algorithm inside the system can predict the impending problem and can take action. Now, uh, uh, another aspect of smart grid is now the smart grid is a huge network and you know very smart network, so supposed to be. Now, it is possible only if you have a well developed communication standards. So devices can talk to each other. So there are a lot of standards which have been defined okay, for each aspect. For example, for the different standards uh, for your buildings or homes. And there are different standards inside the substation. And there are different standards, say for example, uh, for communication between smart meter and the utility. Okay. So a lot of standards so that uh, you know the devices can talk to each other. So this is an example, a good example of uh, IoT. The next example is uh, smart building. Uh, basically, the advantage of such uh, kind of network inside the building is basically human comfort and also safety. We can we can ensure. Now, a typical modern building, uh, you have many, many appliances, and these appliances are getting smarter and smarter. And uh, they have uh, sophisticated electronics embedded into them. They are also network enabled, so that they can they can talk to each other. And you have a supervisory control system, monitoring system, which can keep an eye on all these things, the entire system, and make sure everything is working fine. Uh, some of the examples which are, which are, you can see there, like air conditioning, fire safety, access control, video surveillance, lighting, elevators, so many examples are there, okay. um, gas leak detectors, those kind of things. And in a smart building, these systems will interface with each other, uh, forming basically coordinated networks. I just give one use case, okay, so we'll understand uh, the advantage of such network. Uh, if, for example, the access control system detects uh, very less occupancy or no occupancy in the, in the office or in the say a room, okay, one big room for example, then it can ask the HVAC system or a lighting system to switch off in that room, okay. So that will help save uh, the energy and the money also. Okay. Now if the entire building is uh, sparsely occupied, then it can even switch off one or two elevators to save the energy. Uh, if, in case of fire, for example, the fire system can ask the access control system to unlock all the doors. Okay, and all these things can happen, you know, uh, without human intervention. If the system is programmed well and it has its built-in intelligence, then the whole system will have its own smartness or intelligence or its own brain and uh, it can take uh, some actions uh, in these kind of situations. So that is the advantage of this. And you will start seeing, it's already happening, and you will start seeing more and more such kind of uh, smart systems um, inside the building. An advantage of this is basically uh, the human comfort, human safety, I said, but also energy conservation. So when, you, when all these things work together, uh, you can save also energy and cost.
Okay. So uh, this is automotive applications. So uh, no uh, things like say intelligent transport system. So intelligent transport systems uh, will have, for example, on a highway, for example, where they are talking about a system where uh, the vehicles will interact with each other. So vehicle can talk to each other, communicate with each other. Uh, the sensors uh, along the road uh, will read the traffic situation, will can detect the problems like accidents, etc. The toll collection and those th things will be automated. It's already happening. So it is automated. And uh, so the advantage of this kind of system where the things are networked is you can have a much larger traffic density uh, on the same roads. And one example of uh, uh, the smartness uh, where the, the smart devices uh, is uh, collision avoidance and automatic braking systems which are available in high-end cars like Mercedes Benz so where you see the vehicles can detect uh, you know the impending problems like uh, accidents which is going to happen and they can apply the brakes so now you can see that uh, these systems are slowly going to are going to mimic a human behavior, uh, and they will start taking certain action in real life uh, without human intervention. And another example of this is, of course, autopilot. What you see uh, in commercial aircrafts, and the same kind. Of